Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason. And this is a pain relief session. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a new, a new thing. I don't know why, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to give it a go anyway. I'm going to do Tuesday pain relief. Uh, so every Tuesday, I'm going to release a pain relief session video on YouTube. And the MP3 will also be available to download uh, on my SoundCloud page and also on my uh, website, jasonnewland.com. So this is the first of my Tuesday pain relief session. I can, I'm trying to, I might be able to think of a better title, but never mind. So this is going to be a mixture of different videos, different uh, techniques, different ideas. Um, and chronic pain is something that I've been very, very interested in for many, many years. Many years before I even had any chronic pain of my own. Um, unfortunately, I do have a pain, uh, a shoulder injury from, about, I don't know, 11 years ago. So I have uh, chronic pain with that. And so this basically, I've experimented a lot with my own aches and pains. As I've got older, I've experimented with how to get rid of different um, different types of pain, you know, headache, uh, other physical issues, like, you know, if I've like, even if I've just banged my knee, uh, and I know that it's okay, but it's just bruised or, you know, I can like focus in on that and reduce the pain, which I think is phenomenal. I think it's an amazing thing to be able to do. Um, and it's a good thing to be able to pass on to let other people know. And I know that one of the issues, and it's something that I've come across over the years, one of the issues with chronic pain is sometimes it's hard to accept when someone tells you that they can reduce your pain. Because you may have, tr in your mind, you may have tried everything. You may feel that you've tried everything, acupuncture, da, da, whatever. It, you can, a lot of people just list off a big list of things that they've tried and they're not interested in learning anything new because they feel that, you know, um, it can be a failure issue. They feel they don't want to fail again when I would say they have never failed. It's not a situation where you can fail. It's a situation where you have degrees of reduced pain, or re you know, degrees of increased comfort. For me, there's no failure. It's not a success or failure situation. I don't really get into that. It's um, the success is you're listening to this, to this, to, to me. The success is that you're watching this video. That's a success. Other than that, you know, there's no, it's the success is what you, what you make it, what you give it, what you decide is a success, but there are no failures here. There's no failures. There's no way to fail. That's what I mean. Okay. Uh, failure is a horrible word. It's a, it's a horrible word. Um, what's the point in a word if it doesn't, you know, have some kind of quality of, um, positivity, or, you know, has anybody ever been called a failure and thought good about themselves, felt good, felt happy? Probably not. So why use a word like that? Um, it's basically a swear word, isn't it? It's an insult to someone. It's a, it's, if you wanted someone to feel bad, call them a failure. Um, 
why would you want someone to feel bad? We've all felt bad. We all know what it feels like. It's not very nice. So there's no failures in this. There's no way to fail. All it is is levels of comfort and levels of discomfort. So hopefully the discomfort will lower and the comfort will rise. That's my hope. And these techniques, um, it's lots and lots and lots of different techniques. It's like a, I think with things like NLP and hypnosis, it's a language for me. It's like an alphabet, you know, it's a language and because of that, it can be, you know, you can create all kinds of ways to get to the same result or to get to a result that you want. And if one way doesn't work the way you want it to work, you choose a different way. There's all, you know, choices are always there. It's always open. The door is always open to try something new. And that's what's so amazing about it, because every time you do something, it changes your perspective. And every time you feel more comfort, it's like, oh, it opens your mind up. It raises the ceiling, you know, to what maybe is possible for you and for others as well. And those limitations, those self limitations, which to be fair, they're not your own limitations. They're, they're limitations that you've absorbed from outside, from other people, and then you've pointed it to yourself and you've taken over. Instead of other people telling you what your limitations are, you've now internalized that and you're doing it yourself. So those self limitations can start to pop start to crack start to change start to bend because whatever is supporting those self limitations that you know that small mindedness that sometimes creeps into all of us all of us whatever is supporting those false beliefs as limiting ideas start to crack to the point where it's not supported anymore and the more times you see how easily you can actually feel more physical comfort in that part of your body which you focus on when you listen to me it changes how you in some ways how you see the world and I'm not trying to make it into a big deal. But you know what? It is a big deal. It's a bigger deal for you than it is for me. Because it's your life. It's your body. It's your mind. It's your comfort. It is a big deal. Because it's about you. And that's why I am doing this for you, to help you increase your comfort, reduce any discomfort, any physical discomfort, any emotional discomfort, because you know, it's connected. Of course it is. There's a thing called a neck, you know, the brain and the mind is connected. And then the emotions are there. Because let's face it, if we weren't emotionally affected by uh, our physical state, then it wouldn't bother us. Pain in my shoulder wouldn't bother me if it didn't emotionally affect me. It would just be in my shoulder, just, just something. And, you know, maybe uh, I can't do that without it hurting, so I won't. <laughs> I won't do that then. And 
that's no big deal. It's just that's just what it is. It's just that's my shoulder. That's how my shoulder is. But the emotions. If I start talking to myself and telling myself that I'm not good enough um, because I'm not able to do the things I used to be able to do before my shoulder was injured or um, why can't I go and have an operation and why can't I put myself through that and you know just like the chastising and the self kind of hatred sometimes that could be there well What's the point in that? Let's face it. I mean, that's just pointless. What's the point in self-chastising yourself and being horrible to yourself? What? If you can see a point in that, then put you know write write a comment on YouTube below the video uh, if you can see a reason to be horrible to yourself, because you know I always got this idea. And I've been talking about this for years and years and years. And I've talked about it with therapists. I've talked about it with clients. I've talked about it online on YouTube videos. Would you say it's, a, it's the, same, the same thing. How would you treat a small child? Or would you say that to a small child? So when you've got this internal dialogue going on. And having a go at yourself. And being horrible to yourself. And being vicious. Would you say that to a four-year-old child? If the answer is yes, then please seek help. Please, for, your sake, for the sake of yourself and for the child. But generally, I would imagine most people would say no. I would not talk to a four-year-old child like that. Not really. Not re and really mean it. You know? Because then that's abuse. So why on earth would you do it to yourself? Aren't you important too? Don't you deserve love as well? Don't you deserve kindness? And who's going to give you that kindness and that love? If not yourself. Shouldn't you be number one you know, on the list of who you love? Shouldn't it be you first? So then, in that idea of loving yourself, being kind to yourself, when you focus on that part of your body, which you can do now, if you like, as this is what we're here for, uh, with me, I'm just going to focus on my shoulder, okay? I do have some other pain issues, but it's, I find it funny, but it's it's just all to do with getting older, really. I've got an issue with my back, and it's just, my body is, like, slowly seizing up. Um, and I don't know why I find it funny, but, you know, it's just the way it is. Um... I'm going to start doing yoga soon. Uh, in the hope of trying to, you know, make my back more flexible. But this isn't about my back. This is about my shoulder. What's well, about you? But I'm going to focus on my shoulder. What I'd like you to do. Focus on that part of your body which has been causing you um, discomfort. And when I say it's been causing you discomfort. Because isn't that how we talk about it? We talk about that part of our body like it is harming us. Like that part of the body where the pain is. It's like that part of the body is causing us suffering. You know, when it's not. That's not to say that there's no suffering, of course there is. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching this video. Chronic pain is is horrible. When it's at its worst, it is it's, it's awful. Okay? If it wasn't, there'd be no point watching this video. There'd be no point in making this video. And um, the drug companies would lose billions and billions of dollars every 
every week if pain wasn't an issue. It's the number one thing for medication really, isn't it? Pain. It's the one thing that really pretty much hits everybody at some point in their life. Either whether it's for short term or long term. So focus on that part of the body and just try and wrap your head around the idea, wrap your mind around the idea that actually that part of your body isn't doing anything to you. That part of your body, which in my case is my shoulder, it's not got some kind of agenda. It's not um, at war with me. That part of your body is not at war with you. You know, it's not secretly trying to harm you. It's not trying to cause you problems. It's not trying to really hurt you at all. That's not to say that there isn't physical discomfort, because obviously there was, so that's why you listen to this, but it's not there to cause you emotional problems. It's there because it's just a physical thing. It's there because you're a human being. It's there. Mine's there because I had an injury. But basically all I did was hit the corner of a shelf and it's been problematic since. I've had injections, steroid injections and stuff. I need an operation on it. So it's there, it's not there to hurt me. It's not there to, um, you know, to, to change my life or to hurt, you know, to ruin my life or to destroy me or it's not a punishment. Wrap your head around that idea that the physical discomfort that you've been experiencing is not a punishment to you. So you don't have to have those emotions of um, feeling punished, feeling feeling t attacked, feeling abused, because you're not. That's why that inner talk needs to also change. Because you're not being attacked, therefore you don't have to attack it back. So before when you felt like there was this negative energy going both ways you felt it was coming from the pain part of your body it was like a negative energy like it was attacking you and then in your mind you're attacking it back saying you're this you're that you're horrible i hate you both unnecessary that part of your body is not attacking you it's just there it's a feeling, it's a physical feeling, which means those internal um, dialogues, those words, those sentences, that harsh speech, that hatred maybe towards that part of your body that you used to have is no longer necessary. You just, just let it go. It's not needed anymore. There's no point licking a clean plate. The food's gone, you've eaten it all. You can lick and lick and lick and it's gone. There's no point. Once the gravy's gone, that's it. There's nothing else to get off the plate. So getting rid of chronic pain is very much like licking a clean plate. So what does it feel like? I just want you to test this. Just test it. Don't take my word for it. Just test it. What does it feel like when you just switch off that crap going on in your head? You know, that hatred, that horrible stuff that you would not say to a small child. So cut that off. And then notice how it feels in that part of your body. Now, do it now. Just test it, just notice. Now, 
notice how different it feels. There's a calmness, apart from anything else, in your mind, there's a calmness. There's like an understanding, there's like, oh, okay. Like a little light comes on. Never understood that, that term of a little light coming on, because I've never had that. I've had a few go out, but I've never never had one go on. I'm like, oh, but it's just a, an idea. So then you go to the area again, focusing on the area. What does it feel like knowing, not just believing, not just, but actually knowing that that you part of your body is not actually out to get you. That part of your body is not out to hurt you. It's not out to kill you. It's not out to cause your life uh, disruption. It's not out to cause misery to you emotionally. It's just there because it is. It's just a physical sensation. doesn't change the fact that it's there so there's acceptance involved in this accepting it's there you do what you can to help it if you need to have an operation have an operation if that's what you want to do if you need to have steroid injections have steroid injections if that's what you need to do if your doctor prescribes you painkillers and that's what you feel you need to do then do that maybe maybe you can reduce those painkillers but of course you know do it with the consent and the supervision of your doctor or medical practitioner always that's what they're there for they're there to care for you to look after you to make sure that you're well and that you're safe So what does it feel like when you actually now just observe that part of your body, knowing that it's not there to hurt you. It's not there to cause you harm, to do any bad things. It doesn't wish you harm. It doesn't wish harm on you or your family. It doesn't wish doesn't have any feelings towards you really it doesn't have any there's no negative uh, feelings there it's just a thing it's just a part of your body that may be injured or that maybe produces this physical sensation for whatever reason and I won't name the reasons because there's so many different reasons and so many different conditions which cause, um, you know, people to have physical issues. So what does it feel like? When you've no longer got that, you no longer got the physical part feeling that that's attacking you. And you've also not got the defense part in your brain attacking it back which was ultimately attacking yourself without you realizing it how do you feel differently how do you feel different physically how do you feel different emotionally And what I would do if I were you, I recommend you listen to this video or MP3, watch it every day between now and next Thursday, next Tuesday rather. So every day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And then you watch the next one, the new one, next Tuesday. Please let me know how you get on. Tell me know what you think. 
and maybe together in this conversational way with an idea, talking about ideas, focusing only on chronic pain, reducing it, changing, moving forward with your life. And these Tuesday chronic pain sessions are specifically for you. The whole idea is that we, as a collective, together, can form some kind of a group, you know, an unofficial group. Together, we meet up every Tuesday. I know it's not live, it's, you know, it's on video, but every Tuesday, we all meet up together. Maybe on the uh, comments below, you can kind of get to know each other even, maybe. Pass on some tips, maybe pass on some ideas about groups you can go to, forums, whatever, I don't know. But just, it would be nice to have something to look forward to. And I'll be looking forward to this every week. And I hope that you do uh, too, and you also benefit from it. And this is going to be... Um, as I said, specifically for chronic pain, hypnosis, NLP, whatever techniques I come up with really, or that I decide to use, uh, some of it will just be me talking, It'll just be an idea. And you can just, a bit like my hypnotic buffets, you take and leave whatever you choose. You can just take it, test it. Don't take my word for anything, just test. Try for yourself, it's nothing to lose. And the good thing about these sessions is you can listen to them back. You know, oh, did I miss something? Did he really say that? You can go back and just rewind it. And that's it. That's the end of this session. So I'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you very much for watching. Please like the video if you like it. Please subscribe as well, because I've not got many subscribers, so it'd be good to get more. And also, please let, leave a comment just to say hi. And um, maybe even share the video on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you go. Let other people know what's, what you're doing or what I'm doing um, to reach a larger audience. So thank you very much. So that's me for tonight. Thank you for watching the first of these Tuesday night or Tuesday chronic pain sessions. I don't know, I'm gonna have to think of a, a good title. I don't know what it should be, but I'll think of something. So take care of yourselves and I will see you next week. Uh, today is the 6th of December, 2016. So this is the very first Tuesday session. Bye.